Welcome to Charts and Hearts. I'm Sarah and she's Lindsay. And together we're working our way through an epic list of rom-coms in order to find and categorize tropes in the hopes of creating the nerdiest spreadsheet podcasts have ever seen. And today's episode, we are doing Kate and Leopold as part of our Meg Ryan month. Woohoo! Mm-hmm. Yes, this is a movie yep. that uh, came out in 2001. Uh-huh. And... Yeah, it's it's very 2001. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Quick synopsis, I guess, if you forgot about it or you haven't seen it. That's the one with Meg Ryan and Hugh Jackman. And Hugh Jackman travels from the past to the present, like the 18-somethings. And they fall in love. And then she goes back to be with him in the 18-whatevers. Yeah. And everybody's awful. Yeah. Yeah. Even the dog. It's not good. Oh my god. Well, no, the dog's fine. It's because the way they treat the dog. Ugh. Yeah, gross. that's true. They treat him terribly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's talk about some observations. Yeah. So the first thing I'm going to say, like, obviously we're doing, this is the second Meg Ryan month that we've done. Mm. So I think I was thinking about it this morning. I think she might be number one in our rom-com list so far. She yeah, especially for leads. Yeah, but knowing what we have coming up in a couple of months, we have another actor month coming, and Mm -hmm. so there might be a tie, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll find out. Never know, because she's got tons more that we have not touched on. So, anyway. And then my other biggest thing is I was thinking about lots of things and thinking about this movie, and then I was like, I wonder how long it is if I can, like, fit in, like, finishing book club or watching something after, and this movie is two hours long. I know. For no reason. For no reason. And I'm like, okay. Especially because if there was more, like, man displaced in time, like, doesn't know what things are, and it was yeah. funny, it would yeah. be better. But there's not yeah. enough of that. No. I don't know what they do with at the all. two hours. It's, yeah, I know. It's weird. It was like, this movie is just, it just keeps going, and but nothing is happening. Yeah. 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 They show off a lot of Kate, Meg Ryan's character, like, at her job being, like, Good at her job, surrounded by a terrible boss. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like there's Ugh. a like a just a lot of scenes of her just talking and talking. Like it's just not like she's talking too much, but just like like they show like a full presentation. And like, yeah, I, they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like doing her job, which is great, and like yay, showing that she's a career person before they mm-hmm. completely Could, cancel yeah. that. But yeah, like it's not really advancing the plot. No, it's it's so strange. And I just, the entire thing of like, I know that there are articles that we could look up and maybe people have written papers on it of what happened to rom-coms in the aughts. But this is definitely a nail in the coffin of like, it's not the only one because there was a lot of bad rom-coms in this decade. But this is like, what? What is this? It was, it was the period of let's bring together two attractive and I'm hot, you're hot. Let's be hot together. And put them into a weird situation and have them f- fall in love. And yeah. if there's weird, cost- like, funny costumes or, like, hilarious stereotypes, mm-hmm. even better. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. In this one, the stereotypes are about posh British people. So, like, it's not as bad as, you know. As other ones. <laughs> minorities. <laughs> yeah. In other rom-coms. But, yeah. They're, they're very stereotypical. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Even though when they're played by an Australian, yeah, there's that too. It's also peak Meg Ryan's awful hair period I when know. it was like overly bleached and just strangely, so strangely, strangely and cut. Hay-like. Like it's like like a mullet almost. Like it's like a, just a mullet bob. Yeah, it's a mullet bob. It's I don't know. It's weird and like thinking about other stuff I've seen her in around this time. Like, I think that if you also, if you think about the odds, like if it's gelled and all sticking out. Yeah. It would just looks crunchy. Then, then it, yeah. But I'm like, and this is just strange. Like sometimes it's half up. So then it looks like an actual mullet. And I'm like, I don't, why, why is this a thing? Yeah. Yeah. It's anyway, so it's very distracting, but, and also like, there's always a, a really long piece of hair in front of her face. Like her mm. bangs are never, like, it's not even well done. Like, her hair is not done properly also. Like, her her zigzag part is messy. 
and like it's like she's been playing with it and then they don't fix it so then it's just in her face or it's like i don't know as the character like she's very particular about how she dresses like she dresses very like conservatively like tightly buttoned things and then her hair's a mess and it just like it's not about like it being a mess like if she had if you know she was a less particular person Mm -hmm. she could have that haircut and it would be believable or hairstyle and it would be believable but yeah she's always falling out and stuff yeah Yeah. it's very strange yeah but she's also super unlikable (laughs) yeah yeah and also inconsistent because it was a movie in 2001 produced by um harvey weinstein Uh so it does a really great job of having well-written female characters Mm -hmm. i'm sorry character there's her and like 45 seconds of one other woman yep yeah so she's super unlikable especially the beginning the thing she does with the dog is just oh my god yeah she what like the actual electro f- zaps her ex's dog from the par- apartment downstairs. Like, like why did that ugh. exist in the first place? Why is it still on his dog? Why does she have the remote? Yeah, why does she? Why the are they remote? interacting at all? Yeah, she's so obsessed with him. <sighs> yeah, it's weird yeah. and it's so creepy and it's just like it's so strange. But then also, then she completely forgets he exists. Four seconds later, well, because he's yeah, he's like in a mental institute oh that's the other stereotypes that we get in this movie is stereotypes about um mental health and mental health treatment and yeah good times yeah yeah so yeah leaf schreiber plays her ex slash time traveling scientisty scientist is a strong word but Mm -hmm. time traveling eccentric mad scientist man yep yep who yeah brings back leopold uh hugh jackman's character so that's interesting yeah so basically like a lot of shenanigans happen and then Hugh Jackman appears in 2001, and then more shenanigans happen, but they happen very slowly. Yeah, and not <laughs> as shenanigan-y as I wanted. Like, he goes outside once, and then yeah. is fine with it. I'm like, come on, there's so many more things you Yeah, do. like, he's, he doesn't, like, yeah, he freaks out when the phone rings and the, he accidentally turns the TV on, but, like, that's it? Yeah. He, he adapts to, like, modern society and modern, like, social norms and, like... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like wearing sweaters and not like fancy suits. Like, yeah. Very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. It's a strange thing. And also, every time any kind of time person travels through time, they immediately would die from a virus. But, you know, yeah, they would get so sick. (laughs) But, but whatever. So sick. Yeah. Like drinking the tap water, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Totally. Yep. And through. All this, we get to meet Bradley Whitford playing JJ, Kate's boss. Ugh. Yeah. He's the worst. I know. Not and Brad, it's really, the character. No, of course. But it's weird because he's, it's 2001, so he's like still, like he looks, he's pure Josh. Like he's. Yes. Yeah. So it's ex- extra weird because he shows up and you're like, oh, it's Josh. And then he's the fucking worst. Yeah. Yeah. He's and the it's very stereotypical. Uh, let's go to dinner and talk about things. And she thinks it's about a promotion and he thinks it's a date. Yeah, he she literally says, I thought we were going to talk about the promotion. And he says, but you haven't even kissed me yet. Yeah. Like everything out of his mouth is illegal. Yeah. It's so gross. And at the beginning, he's like, you are like a man, but you're a woman and stuff. And like, it's so poorly written that you're like, yeah. oh, they're doing this to show how bad he is. But I'm like, no, that's not that's nope. nothing. Nope. nope. It's nothing. <laughs> Ugh. The uh, one character who is actually really good and I thought was likable and hilarious is Brecken Myers plays yes! her brother Charlie. Oh, uh, I love he's him. He's so funny. He's an actor. Ugh. I don't watch a lot of other movies Brecken Myers been in, so it's nice to see him have an actual role and act. Like he's yeah. You know, like there's a lot of people in this movie but he's still like probably the fourth main character. Like he's got he gets a lot of scenes and it, he's a good actor. It's yeah, so no, weird. he's really good. And yeah, he does. It's a, it's like a good role because he sort of plays the one that like he doesn't know slash believe that Leopold came from the mm. past. And so he just assumes that he's like a method actor. <laughs> yeah, which is pretty funny. Yeah. It's and they all funny. go off and do stuff. And he mm. like Leopold teaches him how to be a nice guy. And yeah, exactly. That's nice. Yeah. But also Leopold sucks. Yeah. He yeah. is really rude. And Mm -hmm. assuming, because he likes Kate, that he can talk to her whenever he wants and tell her anything and just be super rude and inappropriate and crash her business meeting or what she thought was a business meeting. And then also the entire movie 
from yeah. start to finish, he's complaining about how annoying it is to be rich. Yeah. And how nobody works hard anymore to make breakfast. And like, this man has not made like, his own, himself No, he's never his made his life. breakfast. This is the first time he's made breakfast in his life. And just like, <laughs> dude. Yeah. 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 And so, conveniently, Leif Schreiber's character is the ex, is in the is in like a mental mental hospital the whole time of the movie. Like, so he yeah, falls down it's... the elevator because, oh yeah, that's the thing is like the elevators all disappear because this guy Leopold invented elevators and nobody seems to be that worried or mad about it. Yeah. Like, I mean, he falls down the elevator and then nobody's like, nobody Where did cares. The elevators go? Like people yeah. remember elevators, but they just are gone. Yeah. And then also he's in the hospital yeah. and Nobody cares that he's in the hospital. Nobody no. talks to him. And then they won't let him have a phone. And there was a weird period of time at the beginning of cell phones where they No, not were... cell phones. They won't let him use the phone. Oh, yeah, that too. They won't let him use the phone. And then they take him to a, a stereotypical bad shrink who decides that he's a suicide risk for no reason whatsoever. Well, because he's is talking about jumping off the Brooklyn Bridge to travel back in time. Yeah, but he wasn't listening to him. He was thinking he was talking to him about the falling down the elevator yes that too and then he's just in it's so weird yeah so yeah conveniently the person who like should be helping the solution of the problem yeah. is out of commission but it's just so annoying yeah 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 and like so like we said like more shenanigans of like hugh jackman trying to figure out modern technology like it probably would have been overkill because i don't think this movie could do subtle but like he just he settles in, like, he goes from telling her that she needs a chaperone to go for dinner with her boss mm -hmm. to, like, wearing pajamas around a woman. Like, that's... Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, like, having a dinner with her unchaperoned. Yeah. And then cuddling with her and sleeping in a bed with her. Yeah. And, like, that... No. Yeah. That's not allowed. Yeah. Like... Or it's, it's, like, it's fine that he gets there, but oh, just, yeah. it's not talk Like, he just magically he's just fine okay with it. With it yeah, and she's like, not true. <laughs> she's like, stay with me in my bed. And he's like, sure. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. even, like, way before that, like, the cuddling and the casual intimacy mm -hmm. that they have, because yeah. it's a 2001 rom-com. Yeah. It's like, where did this come from? Yeah. Yeah. And, like, obviously, of course, we'll get to it in tropes, but it's super mm -hmm. fast as well. Of course. Yes. Of course. Yeah, and it's just... Like we said, like this, you're hot, I'm hot, let's be hot together rom com ness of they don't put any work into this movie. It's everything they say about 1876 is wrong. Like yeah. every single thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't really know why they picked that date in the first place. It's not Probably like. Probably like the construction of the Brooklyn Bridge timeline. <laughs> but so like it started before that as well. Like it's oh. just. Yeah. <laughs> And it's not like an even number, you know, it's not like 200 years ago on this day kind yeah, of yeah. thing. Like a, That's, so yeah. it's just, so ridiculous. I just, I'm like, why? Mm -hmm. What? What? Why? Yeah. And then, yeah, so like they, they call out, you know, like her, she grew up with her mom being obsessed with like the British royal family, blah, 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 and watching like Charles and Diana's wedding. And like, she says this line about, you can't live a fairy tale is like the lesson to be learned from like the rise and fall of Charles and Diana's relationship. But then she goes yeah. and tries to like, yeah, yeah. So she, he can't stay because then we'll have no elevators. Yeah, uh, science. And so he goes back, and then she joins him, but like with no forethought. Like she has like twenty minutes to make this decision. Mm -hmm. She gives up all of her career, her life, everybody she knows except for him. Yep, who she's known ah. for a week. She doesn't yeah. know what's it, what it's going to be like. No. And then, yeah, like, you wrote this stuff, but I had the same thoughts of, like, she gave up her career, and then she's not allowed to have it. She won't be allowed to have a job. She won't be allowed to vote. She won't yeah. be allowed to wear pants. No. She won't yeah. be allowed to do anything. And she'll or, just like, have to have sit there. Medical care. Medical anything. care. Anything. And then it's 1876. Like, I don't remember exactly, but she's going to have to live through a bunch of shitty-ass wars. Yep. <laughs> and, like... And for what? For this guy that she knows for a week. Yeah. And like, she doesn't what know she what he's like. Mind? She doesn't know what he's like when he's in his 
element and when he's in his actual privilege like he's already super privileged and then he's gonna go home and have a butler like yeah and also yeah he didn't ask her to come no like he didn't even leave her a note no like they just it's it's like this whole destiny thing because they realize in the photos that leaf shriver takes in the past that he she was there so it's like fate or destiny or whatever but like he didn't ask her to come he actually he like needed to marry somebody for their money because Mm -hmm. his estate or whatever he's some duke needed money it was very um i just finished watching downton abbey uh and so yeah it's very like mary mr crawley like the yeah the parents basically in downton abbey like that's and it's roughly Mm. the timeline of like oh you need money well let's ship you off to america to find a rich yeah american woman yeah yeah yeah. so it doesn't solve any of the problems it just creates so many Mm -hmm. more problems yeah Ugh, gross. Oh, yes. My other thing was, like, very conveniently, she's at this, like, work party wearing, like, a mm-hmm. dress that has corseting boning in it. So, therefore, it's very appropriate to wear at a ball in... Yeah, even though music. it's... Like, it's not super colored. It's gray. But it's yeah. low cut and sleeveless. Yep. And nobody noticed. And also, like, nope. you know, made out of 21st century yeah, fabric. Yeah, like, it definitely has elastic and zippers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, and like, and that's the other yeah. thing I was thinking of, like, no voting, no thing. Like, I hope you enjoy using rags for your period yeah. instead of Ugh. Tampax. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you're going to get your highlights done. Oh, yeah. yeah. Your hair is going to. Yeah. Yeah. Your hair is going to be a hot mess. A hot mess. Anyway, I'm just, I'm, I'm so mad at the. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd forgotten <laughs> how, like, I obviously knew the general plot of the movie, but I'd yeah, forgotten me too. how it just like, oh, she gives up her whole life to go back in time for this guy that she's known for a week. And then the movie ends. Yep. And then that's it. Lo- like, Isn't love she amazing? She can't go back. Yeah. Like, in theory, Stuart could go get her. Yeah, but, but I think it was like 20 years until the next portal. Yeah. But maybe so, it's not yeah. 20 years in 1876. It's 20 years in I don't know. 2021. I don't know. I don't know. Well, in 2021, he can't go anywhere. No, exactly. New York. Can you imagine if he like took COVID back to 1876? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Oh no! Oh, oh we got no. a whole ourselves a whole other movie. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any other observations? No, I'm just mad at this okay. movie. But okay. we're going to continue talking about that because there are so many tropes. So many. Uh, my only other one was just another uh, actor who's in a small role oh, yeah. who plays Leopold's uncle, obviously in the back, and it's another West Wing person. Obviously, Bradley yeah. Whitford's in this, but this is uh, it's the actor's name is Paxton Whitehead, but he plays Bernard from the Protocol oh, Office I in a him. couple of West Wing episodes, and he's yes. Yeah delightful so and sassy in that movie and as soon as i heard his voice <laughs> yeah right cj your necklace is a compliment to bourgeois taste or whatever yes. it is that he says. yeah that guy or yeah and um we was talking about the painting he's like cleverly yes. titled the crypts of dovisher and there it hangs like a gym sock <laughs> shower <rod. laughs> oh man he's so good okay i know okay tropes tropes so many yeah so giant apartment mm-hmm. meg is a or kate is a high up at a marketing focus group Yeah, place? she's like Who market knows? research. But Stuart moves, lives upstairs or, yeah. and, and doesn't have a job. Seems to be a quirky inventor man. Yeah. With tiny sunglasses. Yeah. And so just is, has money. Yeah. Who knows? How do they have two? Yeah. Oh, and then, yes, dramatically saving the damsel in distress on a horse. Ugh. Yeah, so <laughs> there's a purse stature, so and that's is what it is. And she, like, she chases him, so good job him, her. And then, but then she stops, even though he's running into a field of baseball players, and she couldn't yell, hey, that guy stole my purse. Exactly. And then he gets on a horse and chases after him, which is fine, and, it, like normally heroic and whatever it's not actually a problem but she looks at him when he's riding a horse and the way the movie shoots him was like he's riding a horse like it's this thing that nobody's ever done before yeah it's, it's so like, weird yes because nobody in 2001 rides a horse <laughs> i guess so yeah so technically jj is not her boyfriend or her mm-hmm. ex-boyfriend even though he does kiss her on the back of her neck like he walks up behind her and kisses her neck and it yeah. just it's it's gross <sighs> he's super gross he's a gross other man and uh-huh. so like the obstacle even though she's not attracted to him at all in my mind yeah. they were together more but yeah 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 that's like how i remember it mm-hmm. 
And yeah. it was just like sketchy that she was dating her boss, not this. This is just Yeah, it seemed like yeah, they were dating, not that she thought it was a professional relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then she has yeah, she wears like very lots of like suiting style clothes, except she's got this one fancy dress in the back of her closet that she never wears, but she wears it on her date with the British man because you gotta change your personality to get a man. Ugh. Yep. Yep. And then they have a dinner on the rooftop and Of course. And a dance. Because mm. everybody romantically dances together. That's yes. how you can that's how you fall in love. With like dancing. twinkle lights. Yeah. Because obviously he knows what twinkle lights is. Are. Uh-huh. Twinkle lights are from the ni- ni- 1870s. Yep. Yes, and we've talked about this a bunch. But yes, they fall in love or whatever in less than a week. Yeah. And he like is about to ask her to marry him. Yeah. Which doesn't which, make sense. Well, he at was going to ask somebody no, at like, the ball to marry. In in his mind, yes. yes. But also, how is that going to work for him? He has to go back. He can't marry her here. He doesn't have a social insurance number. Or yeah. anything. This is a a thing that from I Hate It But I Love It is one of the co-hosts is always concerned, like in Big and all of the stuff. She's always mainly concerned about oh, yeah, like, people not having social insurance numbers. Yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> it's the same here. I'm like, he can't live here. No, exactly. And like, yeah, he has an accent. So people would assume he's British. And then so he'd be like an undocumented yep. immigrant, which I yep. I know things turned out really great for the, them in uh-huh. the early 2000s. Yeah. Yeah. New York 2001 was super great. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. And then referencing an old movie, which is a weird trope that we found in this journey. It is. I was poor rom-coms it. referencing good rom-coms. To yes. like be like, look, we're in a romance because we're talking yeah. about Breakfast at Tiffany's. Mm. Except they're like, this guy plays the soundtrack to Breakfast at Tiffany's every night. Except it's just Moon River, mm-hmm. which is not a soundtrack. That's just no. one song. That's not just from Breakfast at Tiffany's. Yeah, it was a song before that. Also, yeah. he's from 1876. How does he know what a soundtrack is? <laughs> I don't know. Like she says the word and he just, he doesn't. It's like He like cool. knows what she's talking about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, as we said, this is New York, Trope Mm -hmm. City, which is perfectly fine. Yeah. So, yeah, there's lots of running at the end. They are in a cab and they're trying to get to the Brooklyn Bridge because she got to jump off the Brooklyn Bridge to get Mm -hmm. into the 1870s. And, yeah, so they are stuck in traffic. So they run and they run so far. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and then so I was doing the spreadsheet the other day Mm -hmm. and running at the end of the movie is our most popular trope. Oh, yeah. So far. Yeah. That makes sense. I feel like it happens a lot. It's a lot. Because it's yeah. very dramatic with the swelling music. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then before she gets in the cab to run away, she has to give a speech mm-hmm. randomly because when you get promoted, you just have to give a speech to people. Sure. In a ball gown. never want to get promoted. <laughs> no. <laughs> and she stumbles over it because she realizes during the speech that she's in love and yeah. is about to abandon this job that she worked super hard for. And everything. Yeah. Ugh, gross. Yeah. Okay, that's so many tropes, I can't even. Yeah. Does this movie pass the Bechdel test? Um, technically, yes. yes. She has an assistant, who's Natasha Lyonne, who's, which was so random. Yeah. So long yeah. ago. Um, and they do talk about her actual job as a job, and then they mm-hmm. talk about it in relationship to JJ, but and also they talk about Leopold, but whatever. At one point, they do talk about her work. But yes. I still give it a fail, because she literally gives up Everything, including her job and her right to vote and her right yeah. to tampons and birth control. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> and just medical care in general. Just medical care in general and pants and like Ugh. pajamas, like slippers, mm-hmm. like any everything, everything that I Television. love in my life. <laughs> Pop tarts. She lives it all up for a man that she's known for a week who was not like, hey, you should come with me, but left to never see her again, didn't seem to be that worried about it. And she's like, yeah, I'm going after him. Yeah. Because yeah. my ex-boyfriend told me to. Mm. Ugh. Okay, let's make a pie. Okay. okay. I'm going to start with the third one because it's my favorite. Yes. It's 2001. Okay. And this movie is full of teeny tiny sunglasses. Oh my god. They're so, so many. small. How do they protect our eyes? Poorly. <laughs> <laughs> Poorly is how they protect our eyes. I don't know, like 15? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Gross men being gross. Ugh. So many. Um, like, 45? Yeah. 
It's the main thing I'm going to remember from this movie going forward. Yes. Oh. Yeah. But back to funnier things that like should have been a bigger deal. Do you know how tall the buildings in New York are? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes, I do. Broken elevators. And everybody just like very happily walks up the stairs. Walks up the stairs. I'm like, Sarah was there when my elevator wasn't working. And yeah. I live on the 11th floor. And she Ugh. knows how much I whined about it. So much. <laughs> <laughs> I would have just moved. Yeah. I don't know, like 30? Sure. Yeah. 30% broken elevators? It probably is actually only 20, but it should have been a lot. Yeah. And then finally, posh British stereotypes. Yeah. So many. Like yeah. the fact that he's conveniently then playing a Duke for this Duke butter margarine stuff. And it's just. Yep. And like the. I'm sure they did this on purpose. Like, the outfit they put him in for the commercial is so wrong and over the top. Like, he's got all sorts of fancy, like, ties and vests. Yeah, and, and like then a, he's got, like, the, like the big an gold necklace. Like, yeah, necklace that, thing, yeah. That goes over the shoulders mm -hmm. and, like, like not a cape, but, like, a big, long red jacket. And just, like, it's so, like, they just put everything on him. So it's ridiculous. kind of funny. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, that would be 10% posh British stereotypes. Mm. One thing I just thought about that has nothing uh -huh. to do with anything, but at some point they're looking at the Brooklyn Bridge because check off. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I lived here for 10 years and I've never traveled. I've never left. I've never gone on a bridge or something. Yeah. I'm like, what? You live I know, in she's like moved to New York and never gone on left vacation? Matt well, um, not even that. You've never gone to Brooklyn? Yeah. Like, what? I don't... I've... Or any of the other boroughs. Like, it's just... It's, it's the very strange. weirdest writing. Yeah. And, like, you could have been like, I've never traveled. You could have said that in a different way. <laughs> yeah. It's just so it strange. very unnecessary. And also, like, then she doesn't travel. She travels through time. But she's still <sighs> in Manhattan. Right? Afterwards. It's oh, just... Oh, no. <laughs> <sighs> anyway okay. what's next for them oh god they are stuck together and they're gonna have terrible problems yeah and she'll die mm -hmm. of a disease that she's never been exposed to yeah and or like doing something wrong that ends up with her getting infected with something gross like you know plumbing issues or something oh phew, yeah. Well, yeah or they're just gonna have to live in his like crumbling Duke crumbling house castle yeah thing because they have no money yep <sighs> or they'll have to go back to england and then what will happen like it just <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's okay because he invents the elevator so yeah i guess i guess it's money. all fine Ugh. do we actually want to talk about this director's cut because i don't even i didn't want to know that <laughs> yeah so that's why this movie is worse because not only is it longer mm -hmm. in the director's cut in this one, which I think I saw or heard about because I remember having this conversation with my friend when this movie came out, it is implied that Stuart, Lev Shriver, is a descendant of Leopold, which means just grossness. Yeah, because he said that he's means... been dating his like great-great-grandma? Yeah. Gross. Which is why they took it out, obviously. Yeah. But apparently it made it in yeah. for a while. Well, and... Like, that, I guess, contributes to why he was so fixated on getting her to go back. Yeah. yeah. yeah and also so why he was so fixated on him in the first place. Like, he was, yeah. like, he knew who he was, and he went there and was specifically taking pictures of him, like, when Stuart traveled back. And then, like, yeah, he's the Duke of Albany. Like, he knows his name and, like, all of the stuff about him. So it makes sense from a that yeah. point standpoint. But then when the movie ends and you're, like, so this, this is the memory I have of my in seeing this movie of like the movie ends and you're like what yeah no thank you so okay well we're gonna move on to better and brighter <laughs> things we can only hope Lindsay, what's next for us so next net uh, for us in meg ryan month is addicted to love Ooh. which yeah. i don't know if i've seen i have not seen it for a long time so that's exciting and then on our patreon we are watching the new one which is called Meg Ryan and David Duchovny are in a movie together. That's it's the called name. What Happens Later. <laughs> um, and I'm excited because yeah. my Meg Ryan and David Duchovny are in a movie together. That's It'll why. It'll be an adventure. Yes. Um, 
That brings us to the end of this episode. You can leave us a rating or a review wherever you get your podcasts, like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening to this right now. You can also find us on social media. We are at Charts and Hearts Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, Threads, and we are at Charts and Hearts on Twitter. You can also head to our website where you can submit your suggestions for rom-coms and tropes for us to add to the list. When I was looking through this IMDb, I went to Hugh Jackman's IMDb because this was his fourth movie in America. Mm-hmm. And I rediscovered the movie Someone Like You, which I'm going to put on the list because it Ooh, looks yeah. terrible, but great. Ashley yeah, Judd, lots to Hugh Jackman, about. and Greg Kinnear. Oh, delightful. It sounds great. And like, and Hugh Jackman's 2000 Wolverine arms. Like, mm-hmm. We didn't talk about that in this movie, but they're delightful. Anyway, so that's going on the list. And you can also check out everything we have at Patreon over at patreon.com slash charts and hearts club. Yes, if you like the podcast, there's like an extra episode every month on our Mm -hmm. Patreon you can check out. And there's some ridiculousness. Yes. As always, we would love to hear your thoughts on this movie. And in the meantime, it's no more crazy than a dog finding a rainbow. Oh, I was going to put mine in. It was shake, shake, shake the bottle. That'll come out and then a (laughs) lotl. That also works. (laughs) 